Okay, so let's uh, let's create a brand new project, and we're going to call it Exception Handling Project. And I'm going to shut off this old project that I have. Oh. Okay. And uh, I'm going to create a class called Demo, which I often do, which is kind of just a dummy class here. And uh, let's say that we were doing uh, an exercise where we wanted to, we wanted the user to enter a number and uh, we wanted to check the quality of the number to see if it meets certain criteria, right? So I have uh, public, static, void, main, string args, right? Okay, so I got that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt the user. So, um, okay, now uh, we, we talked about different loops last year also. We talked about for loops and while loops. I don't know if I mentioned this do while loop, but I'm going to just go over it today. Do while is like a while loop, but you guaranteed it's done at least once because the check is at the bottom of the loop instead of at the top of the loop. So I'm going to say while, uh, while we don't have a valid uh, response, we're going to keep going here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this Boolean valid variable and I'm going to set it to false initially. And uh, as long as I don't have what I want, it's going to stay false. Eventually, when the user finally gives me a number that's in the range and is acceptable, I'm going to turn that to true, and that's going to allow me to exit this condition. Once I have a valid variable value, I'm going to print it out, uh, set it to some fake thing like this. And now, first, what I'll do is I'll prompt the user. So I'll go system out print and I'm using print instead of print ln because I want the cursor to stay on the same line although with blue j it doesn't work so well anyway I'll say enter a number between 0 and 3 inclusive and I'll leave the cursor there and then what I'll do here is I'll create a scanner I'll tie it to the keyboard and then I'll read now, this is a new feature that they've added to BlueJ. I don't think it was there previous years. You can see it says uh, you can automatically fix it. They're trying to make it more like IntelliJ. So if you click on this, you'll see it'll automatically import the scanner for you, which is kind of nice. Uh, but we're leaving BlueJ behind, so it's a moot point. Anyway, uh, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to read the value that they enter. So I'm going to go next int here. That's going to let me read an integer. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see uh, if uh, value is um, gr a greater than, uh, sorry, less than zero uh, or uh, value is, uh, is greater than three, then it's no good, right? Uh, so if it's no good, we're going to tell the user it's no good. So we'll go system out print ln, uh, try again or something like that. Uh, otherwise, it is good. And so if it's good, what do we have to do anything? That's my question. Turn to the person next to you and try to figure out what code should go in here if it's a good situation. We've got the data that we need. What do you think? Okay, um, Mr. Mulcahy, what should I do here, sir? I need to do something. I need to set a value here. What value do I need to set here? Mr. Amrani, so if I don't set the value to true, I'll never exit the loop. So I have to set that to true here. So let's try this out. And here, as I run it, you can see now... Ideally, the cursor should be here, but the blue jay kind of splits the input and the output. Anyway, so you can see that if I put in a bad number, it asks me for it again. And if I put, yeah. Okay. So, and you can see if I put in a negative number, it doesn't work either. But if I put in a good number, you can see it tells me I put in a good number. So that's good, right? Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and guard against the case where they type in complete garbage. So look what happens right now if I run this. And they're asking for a number. But if I type in some garbage like this, you can see I get all this red ink on my screen and input mismatches. That doesn't mean anything to the user. It doesn't mean anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'll make a copy of this. 
I'll call this demo two. Uh, you can change it in the same code. You don't have to make a separate copy. I'm going to add some exception handling to this to handle the case where they don't type in uh, a number. So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a try catch block in here like this. Uh, let me just try it right here. And I'm going to say if, uh, let's say that if they type in garbage, I'll just uh, tell them that they typed in garbage and I'll shut the system down. I'll just shut the program down. So I'll go um, system out println invalid input by or something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to just show you here system exit one here. The one basically means if you exit with a zero, that means everything went well. Everything did not go well here. So you can pass an error code back to the operating system. This error code not, doesn't actually do anything because the operating system is not waiting for an error, but we just put it, make sure we don't return a zero. So um, anyway, so th that's that. So now let's, uh, let me do this. Let me, um, uh, let me auto lay out this thing here like that. And let me compile. And let me let's run it and see if Mr. Sarkar wrote this correctly. So if you put in a bad number like nine, you can see it asks you again. But this time, if you type in garbage, you can see it. It's much more graceful and it's shut down. Right? It said invalid input, and then it shut the program down. So I'll leave this up here for you to peruse and sort of make a copy of because you're going to need this for your lab today because it's going to ask you to, to to go back to the pizza parlor from that you wrote yesterday and make some enhancements. And one of the enhancements is we want to handle garbage input from the user.